Hello, my amazing artists. Welcome to another Art With Me, Miss Tao. Before we get started this week, I have to send a huge big thank you to all the moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, brothers, sisters, <laughs> caretakers and guardians who are helping our young students to submit their artwork every single week. I see you and thank you, thank you, thank you for making sure that I see the amazing artwork that my students are creating. It means the world to me and it's really awesome to see how they are growing throughout the year. Creating art is such an important tool in learning how to strengthen our hands. Sometimes our hands feel like jelly, but the more that we cut and glue and draw, the stronger our hands will become and the better artists we will become over time. So thank you again to all the amazing family members who are helping our students learn at home. I sincerely appreciate it and I really hope that I get to see your student here in school soon. Now, what we are jumping into is another element of art. Remember, the elements of art are those ingredients that make up our art. Yes, there are ingredients in art. Some of the ingredients that you already know, like line or shape, we've even talked about form and space and texture, but not in every grade. So there are seven elements. Which one are we missing? I'll give you a hint. It's my favorite. We are missing color. We're jumping into the world of color, the element of art that is my favorite because it really brings out the lights and the shine to every artwork. Now, before we can start creating our artwork, I did wanna mention that if we were in school, we would probably be using watercolors or paints to mix up our primary colors and make secondary colors. But not everybody has paint at home. I'm going to show you a couple of videos of science experiments that shows what happens when you mix the primary colors together. If you would like to go do the same experiment along with um, these scientists, you are welcome to, but I know not everybody has paint. And that is why I am in currently making little paint palettes to send home to most of my students. Second graders, you already got clay to mix colors. So you will have to wait till the very end if you are getting um, these color wheel palettes. I will explain more about that soon. But today and for this week, we are going to be creating a very important tool that artists use when they're exploring color. It's one of these. This little piece of paper is called a color wheel. Why do you think it's called a color wheel? If you said because it's shaped like a wheel and it has colors on it, you would be right. This color wheel is a very simple color wheel. It only shows the primary colors and the secondary colors. What are the primary colors? I'm sure many of my students will remember that the primary colors are the first colors. The word primary means first. Primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. And they are the most important colors because they make up all the other colors. Not all color wheels look like this. Some color wheels have even more colors, like this one. This has 12 colors and it includes the primaries, the secondaries, and even what are called the tertiaries. Tertiaries are any of the colors that you see with the number three on it. There are red violet, red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet. They come in between your primaries and your secondary colors. And there are even color wheels that are bigger than this. But we're not gonna worry about those because today we're just gonna be making our own version of a color wheel that we're gonna add our cre own creative spin on it. I cannot wait to see all the amazing color wheel critters that you guys are gonna send me. Don't forget, you do have to show me a photo of your color wheel critter to get credit for this assignment. So I'm really, really excited to see that. Let's get started. To create your color wheel critters, so you will wanna have a plain piece of paper and whatever you're using to color with. You'll also wanna have a big circle to trace. Maybe you wanna use the same circle you used for your polar bears. 
Um, you're also going to want to have, in addition to, some paper that you can collage with scissors and glue, but that is not 100% necessary. You can always use a black marker or a black crayon. First thing I'm going to do is put my big circle right in the middle and using my helper hand to hold it down, I will trace the outside. Then I'm going to use this snazzy tool called a ruler to create straight lines, one that goes right through the middle. I use my helper hand to hold it down. And then two more to make a big X. You want to have exactly six pieces of pizza in your color wheel. Notice the middle, I want to make sure that the line goes right across the middle so that my slices are pretty even. Do the best you can, but always make sure that you have six pieces of pizza. Once you have your six slices, I want you to take a look at this color wheel. We're going to start with the primary color that is the weakest, yellow. If you were to mix a little bit of red into the yellow, it would change colors. So I always, always, always start with my weakest color because my water will start to get dirty. Once I have my yellow, I'm going to skip a space. Both spaces on both sides will actually have the secondary colors, but for right now, I'm going to leave them blank and I'm going to use my next primary color, which is uh, red, and I'm going to fill in my next piece of pizza, red. Notice I skipped a space in between the yellow and the red because we're going to do an experiment to figure out what color goes in there. Once I do my red, I skip another space to create my blue. Your color wheel should look just like the color wheels that I send you when you're done. Once all of your primaries are complete, we're going to create our secondary colors. First, I want to take a look at my color wheel and see what color is in between blue and yellow. Blue plus yellow equals green, my favorite. So the green is going to go right in between the yellow and the blue because that's what you use to create it. So again, I'm using my weakest color first before I add a teensy, tiny, eeny, meeny, little bitty bit of blue. You can always add more of the stronger color later like I did, but you can see how it's already turning that little space green. It looks so pretty. All right, time for the next color. Let's take a look at our color wheel again and see what's in between yellow and red. Yellow plus red equals orange. Again, I start with my yellow first, and then I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of red to see if this turns orange. Look at that. It did. Awesome. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at our color wheel again and see that red plus blue equals purple. So let's see if we mix red and blue to create our last color of the color wheel, purple. Let's see. Oh, it's so beautiful. You want to make sure that your color wheel matches the color wheel picture I send you. Otherwise, you won't be able to use this as an artist's tool. Make sure it looks exactly the same in the exact order and that you are mixing your colors together to make your secondaries. Now, while my first color wheel dried, I decided that I was going to create another one using crayons. And I actually used the crayons and mixed them on top of each other. And you'll see that here in super speedy fast mode that I colored my primaries first First, skipping a space and then in between I use the primaries and a little bit of a secondary crayon to add the correct color right on top. Make sure that your color wheel matches. Once it dries, I was able to get some materials for collage. This is where you get to really use your creative brains to turn your color wheel into some sort of creature. Try and think of as many circular creatures that you know. The first one that I did was using a marker. You do not have to collage. You can use a marker or even a black crayon to add all of the features of your creature. But if you have things to collage, you could use that too. It is up to you. You are the artist. So I'm actually going to start with my crayon color wheel first. And I'm going to outline my circle before I decide what circular creature I'm going to make. Hmm. What's something that has a shell that's shaped like a circle? You guessed it, a turtle. And I use the tertiary colors for his details. If you want to do a turtle, go for it. But I'd much rather see what kind of circular critter you can make. Maybe a snail or a beetle or, I don't know, maybe a color wheel monster maybe? We're all different artists with our own ideas. But if you can't think of something, you're welcome to do a turtle like me. 
I'd much rather see what you can come up with using that creative brain of yours. Once I was done with my color wheel turtle, I wrote color turtle at the bottom and signed my name before I got started on my next creation. For my next critter, I took a piece of colored paper and using my scissors cut a long thin strip to fold back and forth to create the arms and legs of my color wheel monster. I actually loved creating this color wheel monster because I got to use so many different shapes for the eyes and the eyebrows and the mouth and the teeth and all of these awesome fun details that I then glued down and created a collage. I think you guys are going to have an awesome time coming up with your own color wheel critters and I cannot wait to see them in Google Classroom. Have fun and I'll see you soon.